tell me do your friends read do they read books do they read as much as you do yes my friends do are you sure yes i am ah but i i had this impression that children don't like reading much these days well maybe they don't but i do maybe they don't do you have friends who don't like reading no I never interact with people that don't read. You don't? Well, maybe they're my friends, but they can't be a friend that I really, I'm really into. You don't think they're smart enough for you? Yes, because reading books makes make their mind boost, make their vocabulary increase and all that. And if they don't read books, they can be less. Because there's a girl in my class, she doesn't like reading books at all all and she's not active in class oh so if you knew that i don't read much you probably get up from here right <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not that bad okay good do you plan to write your own book one day yes i do what type of book do you want to write um i'm not sure of the name but i want to write a book that motivates other people to start reading books too a book that motivates other people that's a motivational book yes do you read motivational books yes you read motivational books mm. well, which motivational book have you read I've read Tales of the Dressmaker. Is it a motivational book? Oh, well, yeah, fair enough, it is. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, one day you will write your own book, you'll become an author. Yes, I will. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Nice You're chatting welcome. with you and nice meeting you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. I too. hope I can catch up with you one day. Okay. 100 books. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just in case you missed one of the biggest news in the literary world this year, you might just find the following report interesting. 24-year-old Nigerian-American writer Tomi Adeyemi, the author of the book Children of Blood and Bone, recently signed one of the biggest book deals ever for a young adult author. Fox 2000 is reported to have purchased the film adaptation rights to Children of Blood and Bone. Fox 2000 was so impressed by Tommy's style that he tagged the project as being as successful as its other YA franchises, Twilight and Maze Runner. The deals for the publishing and film rights are approximately seven figures in US dollars. Children of Blood and Bone is an inspired fantasy novel set in West Africa. Tomi has said she wanted to write a novel set in West Africa so that a little black girl could pick up my book one day and see herself as a star. I want her to know that she's beautiful and she matters and she can have a crazy magical adventure. A DME is a graduate of English literature from Harvard University and has also studied West African mythology and culture in Salvador, Brazil. She is also a creative writing coach based in San Diego, California. Okay, awesome. She says the West African mythology and the Black Lives Matter movement inspired her acclaimed book. Adeyemi's new book has been getting rave reviews and catching interests in social media, including those from the big screens. Nigerian actress Genevieve Naji shared the book cover on her Instagram page at Genevieve Naji. She wrote, Just bought this book on a hashtag iBooks written by one of ours at Adeyemi Books. I've heard great things and I can't wait to begin my adventure. Who wants to go to the fantasy journey with me? Hollywood actress Yvonne Orji wrote on her Twitter page at Yvonne Orji, go get your copy of Atomi Adeyemi's Children of Blood and Bone. Cross the street.
With children of blood and bone, Adeyemi seems to have emerged as the new literary star out there and we are looking forward to having her book published in Africa. Nigeria obviously has so many talented writers and creative artists, home and abroad. We just wish we can begin to create the systems, structures and environments to harness all the talents. It's a creative economy out there and the world has stopped relying on physical resources like oil. Before we go, let's take this short reading from Jonathan Haynes. First and last, my interest in Nollywood has sprung from a fascination with Nigeria itself. The films are a record in interpretation of contemporary Nigeria, a social and emotional history. Nollywood's characteristic themes and its distinctive and original set of genres arise out of Nigerian society and address its values, tensions, and historical experiences. Africans have had to struggle to get their stories told on film as well as in other media, and in this respect, Nollywood is a triumph of enormous proportions, all the more impressive and interesting because it is a popular art form whose perspective must stay close to that of its broad audience of ordinary Nigerians or risk commercial disaster. Of course, the stories Nollywood tells and the way it tells them don't spring spontaneously from the mind of the people, quote unquote. They are mediated by the complex nature of the film industry itself. My story about the unfolding of Nollywood's central themes and genres is intertwined with an account of the nature and evolution of the industry. Nollywood's business model is to produce films uh, very rapidly and very cheaply. This uh, ensures that Nollywood films are inherently generic. Individualizing a, time, a film costs time and money, and a film that does not give off strong generic signals will get lost in the market. Individual films almost all disappear from the market to make room for others after only a very few weeks. So if a story hits a nerve with the audience, it needs to be told, retold to stay in public consciousness. The stories that are repeated, that don't wear out, or that do so only after almost infinite repetition have a special power. They are the most motivated and essential, the most deeply embedded in the tensions of contemporary Nigerian life. Much of the film's meanings lie in their common forms and thematic complexes, and these are what I try to map and explicate. The film's historical dimension is a rough scaffolding at best, certainly not the thorough, detailed history Nollywood deserves. As I repeat on every possible occasion, the materials for such a history urgently need preservation, beginning with the films themselves, many of which exist only on videotape, now decomposing in tropical heat and humidity. Memories also decay and those who hold them disperse and die, so personal testimonials all, all need to be gathered systematically and preserved in permanent form. We're still close to the beginning of one of the world's important film cultures. Nollywood has grown and changed at a phenomenal rate, but some solid foundations appear to have been laid. No condition is permanent is a phrase often emblazoned on Nigerian vehicles. I've tried to remember this even as I've searched for what seems enduring in the young Nollywood tradition. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. As always, please send us your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I am Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.